Well, I plan hadn't planned on making a video out of this, but this is turning into a major ordeal, so I figure somebody might be able to benefit from watching me flail around with this thing here. This is my DR Field and Brush Mower. Bought this thing brand new back in 1992, paid about $850 for it, and uh, one of the best pieces of machinery I've ever owned. It's, it's phenomenal. Still using it to this day. Or was until uh, all of a sudden it stopped. Um, it would go forward for a little while and then it would stop and I, I couldn't get it to move. And then I'd pull it back about a uh, foot and then hit the, uh, this is the lever here to make it go. And then it would start going again. And, uh, and it would work fine. It was kind of weak, but it was, it was going fine. So I brought it back. I said, let me start taking a look at this. And um, there's a, a gear drive that sits on the side here. And uh, so I decided to take a look at that. So th to get at that, the uh, you know, the wheel comes off. That's just held on with a uh, castellated nut. And then the uh, wheel pulls off. It's got a drive uh, cog here, and one also here on the uh, on the wheel. And uh, then this uh, right here. comes off there is a drive pulley sits in here on the gearbox and when you pull this back with this lever it squeezes this on the uh, on the drive pulley and which engages the gearbox which engages the uh, the drive wheel so um, I decided well I'll try to uh, I'll pull this off. So I took the, the box off. It, it comes off fairly easy. It, it's just held on with a um, bolt here and a bolt here. And then the whole thing pulls out. Uh, there is a pulley that uh, sits on the drive the gearbox, which, like I said, runs in here between these between these two. Pull that off with a with a puller. You get that off it. Once you've got that off, then you're left with uh, with this. So this is a was a bit problematic. Um, it's a weird deal here, but you've got this plate here that sits on this, and it's just pressed down over these bearings, and uh, so to get this off. It's sealed on. It was still fairly well sealed, but not well enough. As you can see, you got a lot of a lot of crap in there. But uh, to get this off, basically just run a screwdriver in here, get some pressure on that. Once you've got some pressure on that, then hit down on this bearing with a punch and a hammer, and drive that down, and it'll start working this plate back up off these. And a little tough. You got to kind of do them all. You know, a little bit here, a little here, a little here. Just drive a screwdriver in on either side till they hit. Then start tapping on that, and it'll start working there. It boogers the plate up a little bit, but yeah, not so bad that it won't come back in when you go to put it back together again. But uh, once I got it open, I just realized how big of a mess I've got uh, down in here. On these small sprockets, the teeth are are almost gone. There's just a barely a nub on there. Um, it's the same way with this one over here. I don't know if I can get in there. Down in there. If you can see, but they're just about shot. So, chains are still in there, still together. Uh, so, first step I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this apart, or I mean, I'll get this degrease, so I'm going to soak this and get all the crap cleaned out of it, um, soak it in some gasoline. So I've spent some time on the internet this morning trying to find spare parts. So this is a, you know, it's a DR field and brush mower, but this was made by Bachtold, B-A-C-H-T-O-L-D, for DR. And DR has discontinued this. They sold all their, lo their parts and spare parts to a company called, uh, I think it's Stellar. Um, uh, it's just a lawnmower company, and they're only open, I don't know, a couple of three days a week. 
I haven't been able to get a hold of them. I've seen forums where people have said, you know, they don't have anything, don't know if they'll have it, if or when they'll ever have it in stock again. So I'm hoping that these, you know, these sprockets are kind of standard sprockets, and I'll be able to just uh, replace these sprockets and rebuild this thing. Shafts are still in, in good condition. Uh, probably, you know, redo the chain. But, uh, so that's going to be what I try to do here. So we'll carry along as I figure this out. I have no idea how to get these off or out. The bearings are you know, still fairly good, which is really surprising for being in this box. And uh, it was sealed. This is all silicone, which is still still fairly pliable. But uh, obviously a bunch of crap got in there. Grit and everything just wore this poor thing out. The bottom of this is just full of crap. So it was dragging through that and carrying all that up into the teeth and just making a general mess out of everything. So let's uh, we'll get it soaking. All right. So what I'm going to do try to get as much crap <clears throat> kind of physically scraped out of here as I can. Get a little pick. Try to get as much out of this housing as we possibly can before I put the gasoline to it. Oh, that is full. It's just full of crap. It's no wonder this failed. It would have been nice if they made this serviceable where I could get in and grease it or do something. Um, to take care of these gears although they lasted 30 years so I guess that's really not too bad what other piece of yard machinery you're gonna buy today they'll get 30 years out of the answer to that is nothing all right so scrape that down and blow that out Things I'm finding out about this as I'm cleaning it up. Right, uh, number one, this paint that they put on there is not uh, resistant to gasoline at all. Not all the paint's coming off. The yellow paint. So I'll try to get that off and paint this back up before I get going again. Some other things I found here, these these three bearings here all have a circlip on them. I don't know if we can see that, but uh, right in there, I'll be able to get a uh, spreader in there, pop those off, and hopefully these bearings will come off then. The bearings are all really not too uh, not too shabby. I mean, I don't feel a lot of grit, not hanging up, everything's smooth. If I can't find new ones, they do have a China number on them here. I'll have to get them cleaned up a little bit more, see if I can read that. But uh, it's a sealed bearing. So they've lasted fairly well. Um, this gear here on the back, you know, it's got a, a keyway in it, so I think this is going to have to be pulled, so I'll probably try to do that next, finish getting this uh, kind of hosed out, go put this on the bench, Let's see what we can come up with here. to run mud as long as you want to pour solvent into it. I think that's 
good enough to start playing with. I'll go put this on the bench. Got each gloves up. All right, got some clip holders here. I'm gonna see if I can get them in here and get these off. said and done. Right, there's the one. There's maybe in here just a limit how far the plate goes on. I may have to pull these things out anyway. seems to want to come off too easy. Let me put a little uh, two-leg puller on that and see if that'll get those off. I don't know if this will work or not. You got the tiniest little lip under there. Slide off here. Uh, that does not seem to be working. I tried being gentle with this thing and run beat on with the dam. Not really a great way of doing this, but uh, seems to want to come. Yeah, there we go. That one is fairly wore out. Let's see if I can't uh, let's let, that, that, let that come out. Now, I think these bearings here are just pushed into this plate, so I think I can just drive these out. I'm going to try to match it up with the socket and see if I can't put it over that and drive it out. We'll give that a shot. Alright. to be a one inch. Let's see if this works. We did that. Alright. This one here be a little more problematic. See how horribly worn those things are. Really bad. So that does not look like a normal sprocket. So I may be in trouble. But uh, 
and I'll see a set screw on it. So pop these bearings off here and see if I can get into it. So the one with the pulley shaft on it is the one that's got the sprocket closest to the outboard bearing. And this one here is it runs a little bit different, runs a little further inside like that. Pressed off the first bearing. This was on this one here. These go in with the uh, slit and a little retaining clip, both on the inboard side, like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to find my uh, bearing separator. Get in there, be able to drive that shaft out of out of this side. It's just too, uh, I don't have enough room in there. Get on that thing. Yeah, that's just not going to do it. No. Alright. Uh, I'm just going to keep working on this. It looks like, uh, so I've got a, I got a key up in there. So that sprocket should come off that. I don't see a, set screw on it so maybe it's just pressed in there we'll see I'm trying to keep working on this it's all kind of a learning experience how this thing goes together I'm just hoping beyond hope that I can get a uh, you know, motion industries will have a sprocket and that this stuff isn't some kind of weird ass stuff These bearings should be, I should be able to find these. I'll get online tonight and see if I can get these, get them coming. Alright, so we pressed the little sprocket out of it. So that's just got a little woodruff key in it. And the way that goes together, you get the woodruff key to the one end. And then this goes on like this. So that over the key down to the end. So that's the way that goes on. And the bearing here goes on over that. So that goes in kind of just like that back on. Alright, now we're going to press this one out. This one's set up. Bearing there with the groove on the inside, and the bearing on the outside. They're down just almost flush, a little bit of the shaft sticking out of each one. So let's see if I can press this out. I did find these bearings. Um, these numbers are 49952H NRs. They don't have any that start with the four, but they are there are 9952H and R's. So I bought a 10 pack of those. It's pretty standard groove bearing like that. So let's see if I can get this stuff brushed out. Same kind of deal, it's got a Woodruff key in it. Have to pop 
that bearing off that. So that's the way this one here goes together. You got the Woodruff key bearing and then that goes up through like this into that. So let's take a look here. So Woodruff key to the outside that gets driven in and then this bearing on the back side. That's the way this one here goes. So Woodruff key through the small gear the uh, other bearing gets pressed onto the back. Alright, this is the last one. This is how it went together. Just got a bearing on either side of the sprocket. It looks like I got a key right here. So the shaft goes in. Key sticking out. I believe this is what the um, little drive gear on the back of the uh, gearbox goes on to. So that's the way this one's set up. So bearing here, again groove on the inside toward the sprocket on both of them. And we'll press this out. Tight. I'm going to try some. Alright, so you got to put this in like that. Put the bearing pullers underneath that bearing, or the bearing separator underneath that, and then push the shaft down through. So that's the way this goes in. So the, the collar in the back here is uh, towards the center, goes over the, the key. And then the, uh, that bearing goes on the outside, again with the uh, groove towards the inside, towards the sprocket. So that's off. So now we just got to put that in, drive that out. So this has two Woodruff keys. It's got one on a long shaft where the sprocket goes. And then this one here is for the external sprocket. So I've got to drive this out in order to get this, this bearing off. All right, today was a pretty productive day. Went down to uh, Bearing Distributors, which is local here in Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, to source these sprockets. So what I found out is that this right here, this one is a standard sprocket. So it's a 32 tooth, 5 8 inch shaft, just a standard sprocket. This one here I'm not going to replace. This is the external drive. This drives a chain down to the wheel. The big thing that I found out was the other two sprockets that you have is this, this little guy here, which is one inch, inch and a half diameter, five inch shaft, 11 tooth. This one here has got the 11 tooth in the 32 tooth. But this is a custom design. So this is basically just this 32 tooth bored out and this welded into it. So stuck in there and tacked in. So that's something I'm going to have to do. So I had to buy two of, two of these, these 11 tooth. I had to buy one of these just flat geared and they come with a 5 8 bore. So that's got to be i have to take that to the machine shop and have them bore that out to, uh, it's a little over an inch diameter, that right there. And then have that welded into it. So you kind of see a little slag in there. It's been, uh, it's been tacked in or brazed in or something. So that's the deal there. These are the, the numbers here. If you want to try to get these yourself. So the two small ones, these are the, um, I have a sun here. That top one right there, H35B11F58 sprocket. So we got two of those. They were ten bucks a piece. 
Then I've got two of the 32 tooth sprockets. So this one right here, the 35 A32 is just the, the flat sprocket itself. That's um, this one right here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's this one right here. Just this flat part, not the not the 11 tooth on it, but just the 32 tooth. That's 35 A32. Then the other one is H 35B 32F 5H sprocket. That is this one right here. And that will come. I won't have to do anything with that. So that's great. I got all that ordered. Um, some of it's Georgia, some of it's Columbia, South Carolina. Now the other thing I had them do is I had them check. Um, the bearings that come out of this are the uh, 499502H and uh, so they had these two in stock so I bought two of them. These have the, uh, the, the clip in them. They are the same diameter as what's in there. The weird thing is is that even though it says that on the uh, on the tag on the actual bearing you see it is a 99502H so that's the new bearing so weird stuff going on here but what she told me was that that 4 in the front of that 99 means it has the clip with it so it's got the uh, little circlip on here or that thing right there, its function is to, to limit the depth of this thing. This is what drives through the plate, the cover plate. It holds everything in place. So they'll have to be set into that cover plate. So that's kind of an odd one. Um, so I bought six of those because I know they're the right thing. And uh, all the sprockets are on order. You know, I'll just uh, play a waiting game and wait for everything to come in. I'll get everything cleaned up, get the shafts cleaned up polished up. I boogered one up a little bit. We got some vice teeth on it, but uh, I'll be able to clean it up with some emery cloth. Other than that, um, we just wait. I'm going to do something with this chain and get this rehabilitated and get it cleaned up, get all the rust out of it. But that chain's really in, in pretty good shape. I don't see hardly really a lot of wear on this at all. It, it feels pretty good. So I'm going to get this housing cleaned up, get it painted while I'm waiting for the sprockets to come in. Then when everything gets in, we'll press everything together and put it back together and see if it works.